Uh, I mean, the things that we – they made adjustments at halftime. They, they countered what we were doing at halftime. We didn't make the proper adjustments. Once they made their adjustments, they made nine threes, uh, six free throws. Um, I think Tim Hardaway was six for seven, four for five from three, 16 points in the third. Got going. So a lot of shots that they missed in the first half that we kind of forced them to make or forced them to shoot, they, uh, they made in the third. But you, you're never going to win a game if you go 51 in the quarter. So um, that's it. It's simple. I just wanted to picture on today what it means for you in your career. It's your 17th Christmas Day game, no other NBA players play more. Uh, just how is uh, this tradition kind of more your and your family's life in your NBA? I mean, I'm fortunate. Uh, part I go to the to the unfortunate first before I go to the fortunate. The unfortunate part is that the family's kind of got used to me being away on Christmas, which is the unfortunate part. Um, so um, I don't know what the ratio of road games to home games. Uh, you can look that up for me and tell me, but I know for sure it's, I've been on the road a lot more on Christmas than I've been at home. The fortunate part is I get to play the game that I love on Christmas. And if it's if I got to do anything else when I'm away from my family, I get to play the game that I love to play, playing on this stage, um, you know, on one of the best days that we have in our in our league. It's, it's usually like the opening night, it's the Christmas Day games, you got the All-Star Weekend, you got the finals and playoffs, things like that. So it's an honor for me to be able to still be playing at the level I'm playing at and still be able to play on Christmas in front of our, in front of the, you know, our fans that love our game. Hi. <clears throat> Sort of your energy does it change a little bit because it's Christmas because it's sort of a big, big time game? Uh, well, I mean, it's, a, it's an early game for me, so I gotta gotta get my energy going, you know, pretty early. Um, not, uh, I've you know never been really a big fan of early games, but uh, it definitely adds. It's Christmas, you get a little bit more mojo on that, and then obviously I know their whole coaching staff, so uh, I get a little bit of kick over that, just messing with J Kid, messing with Does, messing with the rest of those guys over there, so. Um, you know, it's, it's fun. It's very, I mean, it's a fun game for me all night. And then just as somebody who, you know, faces double teams as a great passer, kind of putting yourself in, in Luca's shoes for a second, are you, when you face double teams early on in games, is there a sense that, like, some way, somehow, I'm going to beat this? And is that satisfying advice of a great player? Uh, I mean, you'll figure it out. Yeah, I mean, you see the same coverage over and over and over. At some point, you'll figure it out when you have a high basketball IQ, uh, which uh, uh, Luca has, um, obviously. Um, and then you, you trust your teammates, um, you know, to either make the right play or, or knock down shots. In which, I mean, they have a lot of knockdown guys. It, it makes it a, um, a a lot easier on you as well. So, uh, but Luca's IQ is, is is off the charts. So he can, he's going to make the adjustment for sure. And then their teammates, um, he, they made the adjustment as well. Well, I mean, it's, it's one game, um, you know, and it's always I'm not much of a Monday morning quarterback. You know, it's easy to look at the film afterwards. But, oh, I should have did this. Oh, I should have did that. I should have did that. Um, you know, it's one game. We came with a, with a game plan. It worked the first half. We could have made some adjustments, but it's not, you know, reason why we, we lost the game. I mean, um, but what's reality is that, you know, without AD, you know, we lose a lot of length, which we don't have already. So, um, you know, we have to make up, you know, in ways that, you know, without AD is just very difficult, very challenging. Um, so <clears throat> I think one at one point we had a lineup of, uh, I think, I think AR was the tallest guy on the, on the, on the court. Yeah, yeah. So it's, you know, it's not a rocket, you're not a rocket scientist to figure that out. So that's me a couple times this year. Um, yeah. and, the, and then this team has been in some tight spots this year. Um, I'm sure more than you'd like, uh, you know, 0 and 5 start, 2 and 10. 2 and 10. Uh, I mean, it's dug itself out to a certain extent. What what, att what attributes have you seen that, that maybe give you confidence that there will be a figured out in, in kind of the, the complex problems you have facing? Uh, I think I look at it. And, and, uh, I look at it that way, as so I look at it the other way too. Like, how many times are you going to try to dig yourself out until it's too much dirt on you? Mark, 
how are you processing playing as well as you are year 20 you got a birthday coming up but obviously the season is not unfolding the way you want to how are you kind of stomach Oh, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm, I love to play the game of basketball. I'm still enjoying going out there and playing in front of fans, either at home or on the road. And um, I'm just trying to control what I can control. Uh, I show up, try to lead these guys, and, and try to lead to, to victories. And obviously, there's been times where I've been frustrated. There's been times I've been happy. There's been times I've been like, okay, we can do better here, or whatever the case may be. But, um, you know, try to keep – I always try to stay even keel. Uh, there's ways that we can be better. There's some things that we're – good at there's some things we're not that very good at so um but we have another opportunity in two days what's today sunday yeah we, yeah so we play on tuesday in orlando we have another opportunity to win a ball game but we got to go out and, <clears throat> and play the right way and if we will play the right way and sustain our effort 48 minutes it gives us the best chance to win last question john here in the red okay. yeah, let, let me call one Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, first of all, to speak on Ja, I think it's um, amazing to have him as part of the signature crew at Nike. Um, what he brings to, you know, the group of guys that we have, I think it's me, KD, um, Giannis, Paul. Um, I, think I think that's all. I think so. Um, at, at Nike, obviously we have the, the Jordan brand as well. Uh, they, they got some signature guys as well. But Jaws uh, electric. Um, his um, his ability to um, obviously what he does on the floor, but I think he grabs a lot of young kids, a lot of youth, a lot of people, kids that watch Ja and um, see him coming from like a small city where he grew up, and then see him going to a small Division One school to now being who he is today. Um, I think it's a, it's a beautiful thing, and happy to be a part of a crew with him. Um, and for myself, I'm just I'm very humbled, very blessed to be able to have 20 signature shoes. Um, you know, like you said, it's only myself and MJ, and you know we just try to uh, lead the best way we could on the floor, uh, be a great example, not only in the court but m more importantly off the floor as well. And uh, to be doing it with the best brand, or one of the best brands in the world. Uh, I'm obviously I'm a Nike lifer for life, and you can't tell me nothing bad about the about uh, being a, in a swoosh and, and, and rocking that Nike swoosh. So. Um, it's, a, it's it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing for sure, and I'm gonna hopefully continue it. Yeah, you competed against Dirk. You're gonna get your statue. I hope. I hope. I hope. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Man, I, first of all, <clears throat> before the unveilment of what the statue would look like, I already knew what the statue was gonna look like. It had to be a fadeaway one leg. It had to be. No question about it. Dirk is a he's a legend. He's an icon. Um, I think he's the greatest international player ever. Uh, put him right there with, with Manu. Um, but it, what he brought um, here, what he brought to the city, um, that boy was cold, man. Dirk was cold. He was. He revolutionized with like a stretch four, um, big could look like being able to put the ball on the ground, uh, uh, finish above the rim um, in his earlier years, and then just mastering that in between game. As his game got, um, you know, a couple years down the line, and then he started taking it out to the three-point line. You couldn't put a small on him because he was too big. You really couldn't put a slow big on him because he was too quick with his first step early on. And you could never block his shot because it was just he shot it behind his head, kind of like Larry Bird-esque. Uh, so, Dirk, uh, when you talk about like top power fours, top players of all time at that position, he, he's right up there with like Barkley and Tim Duncan. And, Kevin Garnett, Kevin McHale, those guys, they tough. Dirk was tough. I mean, guys, you could, when, you could, when you could talk about somebody with one name, you know he was tough. And Dirk was tough, for sure. Thank Appreciate you. it.